Hello everyone! I'm back again with another tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make newborn baby scratch mittens. So, what you'll need to get started is some yarn. Today I'm using this really soft pink cotton. Everything I use I will link in the description down below, so don't worry if you are feeling a little rushed. You will need some yarn. I'm again going to use this super soft pink cotton. You're also going to need a crochet hook. I'm using a four millimeter aluminum crochet hook. You're also going to need, well you don't need that, that's what we're making. <laughs> You're also going to need a yarn needle. So that's just going to be used at the end to weave in the ends. So don't worry too much about that right now. And if you don't have one of those, you can definitely use an embroidery needle or a darning needle, or you could just weave it in with your crochet hook at the end. This is just an extra. So the amount of yarn we're going to need is very minimal. For one of these baby mitts, uh, you only need 20 yards of fabric. So I'm gonna say about 25 yards just to be safe in case your tension is different than mine. Um, but for the way that I did it, it's a 20 yard project. It's super simple. And this is actually what the project is. So you can see this little baby scratch mitt is, it's a little bit wider and longer than an actual baby hand, like a newborn baby is gonna have like a teeny tiny fist. The reason we make it a little bit bigger like this is so that there's lots of room for them to move around their hands in here without feeling constricted. The other little extras about this little mitt is that we have some eyelets that are actually around that wrist portion for our little tie to weave in and out of so that you can tighten it a little bit. And lastly, we have a little flare that happens by increasing the number of stitches, and that's just gonna make it easier to slide it over the little baby hand so that um, there isn't gonna be any risk of catching a finger or something like that. So this is what we're gonna make today, and let's get started. Okay. So, this project is worked in the round. Um, the pattern, the written instructions for this um, tutorial will be available on my Etsy page, so if this is a little bit difficult without the written pattern, um, please feel free to go there and check that out. Um, but if you don't want to buy a pattern, I get that too. So you could just follow along and I am happy to teach it nice and slow so that you can figure this out as well. Um, this is an updated video. So basically, I already have a baby scratch mitten tutorial, um, but I went back and checked it and I realized some of the instructions aren't super clear and some of the parts on it could have been uh, simplified. So that's why I am redoing this video right now. So the first step is to create a slip knot. This project is worked in the round, so the first thing after the slip knot is we're going to chain three. So there's one, two, and three. After that, we're going to be doing half double crochets. This chain three is going to behave as a half double crochet when we're talking about, um, when we're talking about how many half double crochets we're gonna have in this round. I'm gonna try and zoom you in just a little bit more. All right, so I managed to find a closer angle. So I'm gonna just start it again. The first step is going to be to chain three. So there's one, two, and three. Again, that chain three is going to behave like one half double crochet. The next step is we're going to create one half double crochet into the first stitch from your chain three. So just half double crochet one time. And now you could see that hole has gotten just a little bit bigger and easier to um, work with. Now, so that counts as two half double crochets into that circle. Now I'm going to do another eight. So in total we're going to want ten stitches going into that center, into that first stitch. So we're going to have completed nine double crochets into the first stitch after your chain three. And that will behave as ten half double crochet stitches. It's okay if your uh, hole begins to grow as you create your stitches. You can just pull on the tail at any time 
and it'll close up that hole for you. Um, it's nice to keep it wide though while you are putting your half double crochets in, it just makes it a lot easier. If you are a little bit um, more advanced, you could definitely do a magic loop uh, in order to create your round. You just need to uh, make sure there's 10 stitches in it. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then we're gonna do one more half double crochet into that center. And then the next step is to connect to the top of that chain three that we did at the beginning with a slip stitch, just like that. There we go. And then now that it's connected, you can pull on the tail end nice and tight, and that's gonna completely close up the circle there. Our next step is going to be to chain two, chain one, and two. And now we're going to do two half double crochets in each stitch around. So at the end of this round, you should have 20 stitches total. This chain two counts as one of your half double crochets. So we're going to insert right into the bottom of that stitch that we just um, created with our chain two. And then I'm going to half double crochet in each stitch two times. And that is going to increase the circumference of our little circle. So that tiny circle, if we were to just keep working in the round, it would only be about as wide around as your thumb. You could see how small that is, but by increasing the stitches two in each stitch, we're gonna make the, the circle um, just that much wider to accommodate a little tiny baby hand. So if you're wondering how to upsize or downsize this pattern, it's really easy. I'll let you know right now the trick. Um, if you want it to be just a little bit bigger, if you're not making for a newborn, um, you could definitely just increase the hook size. You could use a five millimeter hook and maybe some thicker yarn. The same goes for if you use a smaller hook and thinner yarn, you can keep your stitch counts exactly the same. Just change up the size of your hook and yarn and see how that will drastically change the size of this cute little baby mitten. So I'm still, I'm just coming up at the end of that first um, increase round and it's actually our only increase round. So this is a super simple pattern because um, it's for such a small hand. We don't really need to do much uh, math in terms of our increases. Um, the only thing to keep track of is how many stitches you have. So it kind of appears that I have room for a stitch here, but if I just go back and count, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and this loop that's on me on the hook is 20. So since we've got 20 already, we don't want to put an additional one or else we're going to have uh, mismatched mittens in the end. You only want to have 20 stitches in your round. Next step is going to be connecting that round with a slip stitch. And then again, we're gonna chain two. And I have a little helpful hint. When I'm doing my chain two, the first chain that I do, I tighten it down just a little. I find that by making the first chain a little bit tighter, I, um, I find the height of that chain two is perfect for my half double crochets. And also the little mitten is super secure. So I'm just gonna show you the completed mitten so that you can see what I mean. So what we've just done, if you look at the top of the mitten, you can see how it's worked in the round. So we've completed that first circle and that second increase circle. Now we are on our third round, this one here, and this one is just straight one half double crochet in every single stitch in the round. Again, you're gonna end up with 20 stitches. If you find that you're having more or less stitches, just go back around. Crochet is super easy to pull out and redo, and with these teeny tiny mittens, they work up so quickly that even if you make a mistake and have to pull out a round, it really only loses you a minute or two. So it's worth it to make sure that you have the correct stitch count so that you end up with the right size um, for both mittens. 
So this is round three. For rounds, let me have a look at my instructions. For rounds three through nine, so that's round three, round four, round five, round six, round seven, round eight, and round nine, we're going to do the exact same thing that you see me doing here, which is just one half double crochet in every single stitch around. You should be maintaining 20 stitches for each one of those rounds. Easy peasy. Connecting each round with a slip stitch and doing a chain two um, in order to uh, build up. And each time you do a round, that chain two counts as one of your half double crochet. So you'll only be completing 19 double crochets in each round and it will count as 20 stitches because of that chain two. So do that until you get to round nine and when you finish round nine, come back here and I will show you how we are going to create those really cute little eyelet holes for the little tie around the wrist of the baby mitten. And you can see once you um, get past the third row, the mitten begins to grow up very, uh, very quickly and you can start to see how it is um, becoming more round and uh, getting more of a tuby shape. So that's just going to continue to happen um, until you get to that ninth round. Um, and at that point you're going to have something that's pretty much already a baby scratch mitt. Um, the eyelets are just a little, a little extra add-on that make it, makes it um, a little bit more delicate, a little bit more beautiful. This is definitely a really beautiful and easy gift if you've got somebody in your life who is um, expecting a little one. This is something that definitely is an appreciated gift. People love using these in their little photo shoots with their babies, but also they're useful. Um, because baby's fingernails are like razor blades and by covering their little hands you reduce the risk of having them scratch at their face when they're sleeping and also look how cute they look having these little mitts on your baby so cute baby's hands are so small they just don't need a thumb in their mitten because they're not going to keep it in there their little thumbs are just so extra tiny that it just makes more sense to have this little tube over them. Also, if this is your first time on my channel, this is a great time to hit that subscribe button. The channel is in the middle of a boom of growth, so I know that there's tons of new faces here and I'm so happy to have you all here. Uh, definitely let me know that you're here in the comments because I love talking to you guys. Um, but yeah, definitely hit that subscribe button and hit the like button if you like this video because uh, I'm trying to figure out what direction I'm going in all the time and the comments and the likes definitely help me decide what to do next. Also, again, if you're new here, I put out a new video every single Tuesday and the Tuesday video is usually a tutorial or a tip video, something helpful in the realm of making. Um, sometimes it's a make-along video, sometimes it's a pattern. Pretty much it's always something crafty and handmade and those come out every single Tuesday at 7 a.m. And Mondays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays, I live stream at 7 a.m. So if you like to have a tea and get your morning started watching some videos, then definitely tune in. Um, there's a group of us that kind of get together every morning. So it would be awesome if you could join us Mondays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. Uh, same place, just different, uh, different style of video. Those ones are a little bit more hanging out with me while I work on a project that I'm not filming. So... Yeah, definitely come check it out at 7 a.m. Mondays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. But if that's not your thing, Tuesdays is my tutorial release day every week. So if you're looking for patterns or tutorials or tips, anything like that, um, that would be part of the Tuesday video, which is released at 7 a.m. on Tuesdays. If you have any suggestions for upcoming videos, again, let me know in the comments. I'm happy to accommodate things that you guys want to see because I like to make everything. So it doesn't really matter what I'm making as long as I'm making something. Okay, I'm just going to slow it down again so I can show you um, in a little bit more detail how I join around. So 
first things first, you need to know where you're not going to have to put an extra stitch. So I always get it confused and I always have to count my stitches when I get to a place like this because um, my brain wants me to put one more stitch into that last stitch, but we're not going to do that because that would add a stitch. We only want 20. When I am connecting around, I find the first stitch in the next round that I would use and I go back one. Rather than counting up the chain, I just go back from the first like main stitch and then I insert my hook into, I hope this is in focus, I insert my hook into the top of that stitch, I wrap my yarn around, and then I pull that little loop through the loop that was on my hook and the loop um, behind it. And then I'll do my chain two, where I tighten my first chain a little bit, chain two, and then you could see that round is joined. Um, I don't know how clear it is in the video. It's a lot clearer for me uh, with my eyes. The line of stitches actually goes on an angle. And that's because when you're crocheting, you're not crocheting straight above the stitch from the previous row. It's above and a little bit over. So that means that our our join isn't going to end up a straight line. That's okay though, because it helps hide it. I find when the line is a perfectly straight line, the seam is much more clear to see, whereas after this has been washed and blocked, you're really not going to be able to see that diagonal line. You also have the opportunity of making that diagonal line the side of your mitten so that from both ends you can't see it. it, it kind of runs up the side. That's another option if you're trying to hide it. Just wanted to add that little tidbit before I um, get into the eyelet stitches. All right, so I just finished my ninth round, and now I am going to um, still chain up two. So I already did the one. I'm gonna chain up two, and the next step is, go this one, this round, I should say, is gonna have a couple of steps. So for the first stitch, which is the one that the chain two actually came out of, right down there, we're gonna do one half double crochet in there. Then chain one, skip that next stitch and complete a half double crochet in the next stitch. And you could see that made a little gap. Next, we're gonna chain one again, skip one again, and half double crochet in the next stitch. Then we're gonna half double crochet in the next stitch. Then we're gonna chain one, skip a stitch, and half double crochet in the next stitch. So you could see what we've done is we have a gap, a stitch, a gap, two stitches, a gap, a stitch, and now we're gonna chain one again, skip a stitch, go into the next one, create a half double, and then half double again in the following stitch, we're just creating that same pattern and then chain one again. We're gonna skip a stitch, insert into the next stitch with a half double crochet, then chain, and then we're gonna skip a stitch, insert again, half double, half double in the next, and then chain one. I'm gonna show you what that does. So by doing the first stitch we did, the chain two counted as a half double crochet. Let me see if I can make that a little bit easier to see. Also, sorry about the construction noise. It's not something I can avoid. I'm right by a window here and I live in a city. Okay, so the first stitch we did, the chain two acts as a half double crochet and then we half double crochet in that stitch, which looks like our two half double crochets. Then we do a chain one where we skip a stitch and then another half double crochet in the following stitch. That makes the gap. And then when we chain one again, that makes another gap. And then we do two si half double crochets and that's gonna make another little bar. Let's see if I can get that close enough to make sense. We've got a hole and then a stitch and then a hole and then two stitches and then a hole and then a stitch hole, two stitches, hole, stitch, 
and then hole and now we're on our two stitches where did my hook go and we're just going to complete that all the way around um, and doing this pattern works perfectly for the amount of stitches that are in a 20 um, 20 stitch round on the last little space we're going to have done a chain one we're skipping that next stitch and then we're joining the round we don't have to insert at the end and that round will join and then we'll chain oops we'll chain two again and now we're going to go in every single stitch around just like the previous rows where we are going to want to um, make sure there's still only 20 stitches and that gap counts as a stitch. So you could just insert right into that gap and that's going to kind of finish off the hole for weaving in our little ties. But by putting it right into the hole, it just makes it a little bit clearer that that hole is there. So you could definitely insert into the chain one, but um, by doing that, you're gonna have to shove your hook into a pretty tight space. So I usually just put it right into the gap. Still with half double crochets. And we're gonna actually complete two rounds this way. So after that eyelet uh, row, we're going to be doing two rows of regular half double crochet. Please excuse the um, setup today. I'm trying to keep a box on top of my surface so that I can be a little bit closer to the camera and it's making it um, difficult because it's trying to move around. Okay so I'm putting a half double crochet in each stitch in the round. If you're not sure if you counted right go back and count them. You should have 20 stitches around. If you've got more than 20 stitches or less than 20 stitches you've got the wrong number of stitches. So just pull it out and do it again separate your stitches until you've got the, the perfect number. So I'm going to go around 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20 in that gap stitch. Makes 20 and then I'm going to just connect the round again the same way I've been doing with a slip stitch and then a chain two. And this next row is gonna be a lot easier because you are just working into half double crochets again. Again, we're doing a whole row around, just regular half double crochets. And we are on the home stretch, people. We are so close to being done this little baby mitten. If you are just working on these while you're watching something, you can definitely get a pair of these done in half an hour. Um, it's an easy peasy, quick project. Uh, once you make one pair, you're going to just be able to zoom through tons of pairs. And if you do make these, I would love to see your pictures. I've got a few people who've sent them to me now, and I love seeing them. I love knowing that there's a little baby who's going to be wearing them, and I love knowing that you got some help out of my tutorial. My other baby mitten tutorial is actually my most viewed video, um, and the instructions are not totally 100% clear. That's why I wanted to redo it because it seems that there are people who want to learn how to do it. So I'm hoping that this tutorial is going to um, clean up the edges of that last tutorial basically. And then I'm just connecting that last round with a slip stitch again and doing a chain one this time. And the reason we're only going to do a chain one is because this last round, which is what we're on now, the very final round, we're going to do two single crochets in every single stitch. And that's going to create a little flare around this little mitten. And it just, it adds a little something extra that makes it feel a little bit mm, fancier, giftier, whatever you want to call it. It definitely finishes the project in a, in a way that makes it a little bit cuter. And you could definitely do these in stripes. You could change the color. Oops, I missed a double, a half double, a single crochet there. Um, yeah, you could definitely change the color. You could pick whatever yarn you really like. 
When I was looking online, it didn't recommend wool, which is why I'm making it out of cotton rather than um, from my wool stash. Uh, it just said that the chance of a baby having some kind of reaction on their face from scratching the wool against their face is possible. So definitely figure out if the baby that you're making these for needs it to be some kind of hypoallergenic thing, in which case I recommend cotton or linen. Um, now that there's so many softer cottons available out there, it's not gonna be something that you find that's super duper rough. I don't love using acrylic, especially on babies, just cause they're so little and natural and new. I like to try and keep my baby patterns uh, for natural fiber. But you do whatever works for you. Um, and this is going to be honestly a loved gift. People love getting baby mittens. They love baby anything. Everybody loves baby things. Babies, dogs, and brides. That's where the world is spending all of its time and money. Okay, so I'm almost at the end of that last row. Just doing a half double crochet in there. Do I have two in there, two in there? Okay, good. Just making sure that I have 40 around because we've doubled how many we had and we had 20. Last step, you're gonna need to trim that and then secure off the yarn. We're gonna weave that in in the end because there's still one thing left. So you can see at this point, the little mittens already flare out a little, which is exactly what we want so that you can just pop it right onto the wrist. We also need though to create a little tie. And what I do for the tie is I make a slip knot and then I just chain 50. I try to keep the chain really tight. Uh, you could definitely use a little cord, a little string, um, whatever you want. But I find that a chain works just fine so I don't think it's necessary to go all out in any one way. Um, the, what I like to do to finish it off is pull the cut side really tight and then the start side, I pull it really, really tight so that that's not gonna fall apart. And then I cut the yarn about an inch away from that edge. You could definitely weave this tail end in, but I found a new way that I like and that is to completely unravel the little ends. So by unraveling that string, after I wash it, it's gonna like fray and it looks like like a little tassel at the end. Um, again, this is a personal preference. If you want to find a way to weave in that end, that is totally, totally okay. Um, and the last step, the last thing we, that we have to do is to get that little chain in and around the little mitt. So what I'm going to do is turn mine inside out. That is another way to really easily hide the connecting line. Like you can't even, you can't even really see it. It's right here. But if we just turn our mitten a little bit, we've got no problem and it's super easily hidden and the lines look nice and straight, which is great. Um, so now what we're going to do is begin to weave in and out. So we have two different style, two different styles of posts. We have our one stitch and our two stitch. With our one stitch, we're gonna wanna be going behind when it's only one stitch. Does that make sense? You want to keep the most yarn from the tie not touching the baby's wrist. That's how I like to think of it. So the little eyelets where there's just one post is where I come out, where I go under, I should say. And then the big post is where the yarn or the little tie goes over. Again, you could switch out that tie for ribbon or whatever you wanna tie it up with. And then you're gonna come around and because we did it with the perfect number of stitches, it's going to do up perfectly with just the both sides coming out of the same, both pieces of string, I should say, coming out of the same area so that you've got um, a nice, easy bow to tie. There we go. And then I'm just going to take my yarn needle and weave in the remaining ends. Okie dokie. And that's it. That's the whole thing. 
just like that. After you weave in your ends and if you want to put your little mitten inside out, you'll see the two differences here. Uh, this one is like not been turned inside out. You can see how the stitches look. Once you turn it inside out, you get a little bit more visible straight lines. So I think I like it both ways. It kind of depends how you feel about having the, um, the diagonal line show through. You can see if you leave it the way that you've crocheted it, the line may be a little bit visible, nothing too offensive, just not totally invisible. Whereas uh, if you turn it inside out, the line is right here with it right side in, it's right here. But if you just put that line on the side, you're not gonna see it at all. It's not gonna cause any problems and it's super not noticeable. But that is the whole thing. So to make these little uh, baby scratch mitts, it's, I would say a beginner friendly pattern if you understand working in the round and you know how to do a single crochet and a half double crochet, then you are more than capable of creating these adorable little mittens and hopefully using them for a little baby in your life or gifting them to someone who's gonna have a baby. So I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I enjoyed making these little mittens and I'm gonna be back next Tuesday with another tutorial for you. Um, but that's it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.